It's amazing the difference uh, a couple of games and a couple of wins can make to the mood around Manchester United. But after those first two games against Brighton and Brentford, those two wins against Liverpool and Southampton, different types of wins, different types of edges to this United team that we're starting to see. We go and we face Leicester on Thursday. Bottom of the table, Leicester. The bubble is bursting for Brendan Rodgers. Does that mean United are guaranteed a win? Absolutely not. There is no easy pushover game in the Premier League anymore. It just does not exist. In this video, I'm going to run through my starting 11, well, predicted start 11 and potential start 11 for the game. We're going to speak about Casemiro and his full debut, about, I think, Ericsson being rested. What about Ronaldo? What about Anthony? Loads to discuss. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV, people. Go down there, hit that subscribe button. Become part of the growing community here. It's a, it is a fantastic community. It really, really is. And you're making it, not me. But I'm glad that we've been able to facilitate it together. The main question is going to be around Anthony. Now, maybe even by the time this video goes out, I think we'll know. I don't think Anthony will be in the starting 11 to face Leicester. I don't think he'll be in the team to face Leicester. Even if he's ready, even I just don't think it will happen. I think Eric Ten Hag will save him for the Arsenal game. And I think, as I said, the work permit issues will actually get in the way of it. But if we take a look at Manchester United's team that started against Southampton at the weekend, it was the same 11 that played Liverpool. And that shouldn't really have come as too much of a surprise to anybody, really. It was that game against Liverpool was such a, a turnaround from the game against Brentford. I'm not surprised that Eric Ten Hag didn't make a change. However, there were definitely some questions to be asked from that game there against Southampton. Notably, our lack of creativity in attack. Notably, our lack of control in midfield. I think Eric Ten Hag, well, he'll try and, he'll try and address one issue. I don't think he will address both inside this game. But in terms of issues... This is the complete opposite. How good, how good has this man been in the last couple of games? Two man of the match performances against Liverpool and against Southampton. Proper leadership by example. Martinez has been a warrior. That game against Southampton, to see United actually properly see out a 1-0 win is a rarity. Absolute rarity. Over the years, recent years anyway, We've grown, used, we've grown used to and got accustomed to the fact that United will concede late on in the game. But this man here, acting like a captain without the armband, changing the sort of the fierceness, the, men, the, the mentality, the approach of this United team, and long may it continue. But does that mean? It kind of goes without saying that back five's not going to change. Now, with the games coming thick and fast, I worry about Diogo Delo. I think if you're looking at a weak point inside this back four, I know Luke Shaw's not had the, the sort of progression that we would expect to, and certainly Matasia is ahead of him in the starting 11, but we've got an alternative there to Shaw. To Matasia and Shaw, we can switch those two in and out across the course of the season. At the moment, we've got these two. It's an issue. I think if uh, Eric Ten Hag got what he wanted, we would have, we would have got Wan-Bissaka loaned out of the club to West Ham or Crystal Palace and we would have brought in a new right back. Delo's been playing well. Probably, you could argue he was up there with man of the match against Southampton. Fantastic cross in for Bruno's goal. He's playing well this season, but he will not be able to sustain that across a 60-game season. So I worry about him. But that back, back five, there's, no ch there's absolutely no chance I'm changing that. I'll tell you what. I'm going to be making changes to that midfield if I'm Eric Ten Hag, and I think they are necessary. And one you'll absolutely know about, and probably the other one you'll agree with. But before we do move on, a short interlude. Big shout out to Manscaped for continuing to support United People's TV. And I want to support you. And I want to support your goods. So that's why I'm encouraging you here. Look at this bad boy. The Performance 4.0 package. It literally is a cracking... It really, really is, man. Like Sometimes placements are quite difficult. This one's easy. Of course, you get the main... The main shaver, we call it. The main razor. Whatever you want to call it. It keeps your goods in check downstairs. But don't forget about upstairs. That's where the Weed Whacker 4.0 comes in. And that is now part of the performance package as well. You wouldn't take me seriously here on United People's TV if I had nose hairs flying everywhere. And unfortunately, I've reached that age of my life now where hairs start flying out of everywhere. So you've got to keep it all in check. That's where Manscaped step in. All you've got to do is follow the link in the description. You can, you can get the package for 20% off using the link and the code here on United People's TV. Your balls will be revived. Preserved. I didn't know you could. I didn't know you could preserve them, but you can apparently. <laughs> Manscaped have helped it. And as I said, legitimately, I use it all, and it's good. It works, and I encourage you to do the same. So follow the link in the description. You can get twenty percent off with United People's TV.
But let's move on straight away and let's talk about midfield because, in my opinion, <clears throat> Ericsson needs a rest, right? Ericsson absolutely needs a rest. But that's not even the major talking point of this midfield because. I don't know why I have to give him a song, but I think I had to. Casemiro, I think, will come in to make his Manchester United full debut. That's Lissandro Martinez. That's Casemiro. Casemiro, when he came on the last 10 minutes of the game against Southampton, impressive enough then. But we need him inside that midfield. I cannot wait to see what sort of impact he can have on this team when he goes into the starting eleven. You know full well what he's going to be doing. is going to be protecting Martinez and Varane, holding and screening that back four. And I also think he'll also do a bit of playmaking from deep. He is capable, Casemiro, of these balls over the top. So any runs in behind for Sancho or Elanga or whoever's playing on the wings for Manchester United, he does have that in his locker. Effectively, what he will do, though, is screen in front of that back four, protect the defence and just nice short passes across to his midfield partner, who I, in this game, think will be Fred. And I think this is the first time we'll be able to see the Casemiro-Fred Brazilian partnership. Ericsson, without a shadow of a doubt, should be starting for Manchester United when he is fit. But I think what we've seen in these last couple of... Well, certainly what I saw against Southampton towards the end, I think he looked pretty exhausted. I think Ericsson wasn't brought into Manchester United to start week in, week out for us. He was supposed to be the supplementary signing behind Frankie de Jong. Instead, we haven't got Frankie de Jong. The Ericsson stepped into those shoes and he's capable of it, more than capable of it. But the intensity of the Premier League and the start of this season, I, I think, is getting to his legs at this moment in time. Ericsson's going to have to be managed properly across the course of the season. I don't want him to be uh, exhausted, uh, sort of running on empty. And when you've got a player like Freddie can come in and do that job alongside Casemiro, yes, he won't be able to progress the ball as well from deep. So there will be taking away a slight creative edge from this team. And that's what I mean when I say I think Eric Ten Hag will be able to sort the legs in midfield and the strength in midfield by bringing in Casemiro and Fred for Ericsson and McTominay. I don't think we'll be able to massively address the creativity issues we had in our attack. And let's move on to the attack. And of course, there's one major talking point, which is going to be the major talking point, I suppose, until the end of the transfer window and across the course of the season. Will Cristiano Ronaldo start for Manchester United? It's going to be the question that's asked every single week of Eric Ten Hag. And I don't think he does in this game. Now, I can say absolutely unequivocally that Anthony Alanga was poor against Southampton. A real lack of creative spark that we had going forward. Anthony Alanga, I put in the same category as Scott McTominay. I think he's somebody who will commit himself to United. Somebody who will give 100% every game. But that 100% just isn't quite good enough when you come up against a low block and a technical player is required. But obviously, as soon as Anthony is fit, Anthony is going to come straight into that starting 11 on the right-hand side, and Sancho is probably going to be moved to the left. But I think what we've seen against Southampton from Eric Ten Hag, he chose to leave Ronaldo on the bench, to keep Elanga in, and to keep the same 11, and to keep the same attack that beat Liverpool and that has now beaten Southampton. And I think he's going to do the same thing against Leicester as well. Just a guess. Now, maybe that's not going to be the case because we play Arsenal on Sunday. So maybe there will be some a change up there. But if there is a change up there, it's only going to be Ronaldo coming in. Maybe Ronaldo starts up front and then Rashford starts on the left. That could happen. But what we've seen in these first couple of games, last couple of games, sorry, not first couple of games, is Eric Ten Hag would prefer a lack of creativity by having Elanga there instead of Ronaldo if it means the work rate is higher. And the work rate is significantly important to Eric Ten Hag's football and the system that he's building. But the changes that I think we're going to be seeing, I imagine we'll see a full midfield change of um, McTominay and Eriksen going on the bench for Casemiro and Fred. I would actually argue that's a bit of an upgrade rather than a downgrade. Although Eriksen being left out for Fred means we will lack a little bit more creativity going forward. But hopefully Casemiro can add a little bit more. Maybe we're going to give him credit for. I don't think you're changing the back five. I don't think you're changing the front four. And if you are changing the front four, this is what you're going to see. You'll see Ronaldo start. You'll see Rashford out on the left you'll see Ronaldo through the middle. That could happen, but I actually envisage that Eric Ten Hag will stick to what he has found that is working at this moment in time. Play Rashford through the middle, Langer on the left, and then when we've got the game against Arsenal coming up at the weekend, you're dropping Anthony in there, not Anthony Langer. You let me know what you think about that as a starting eleven. As I say, big shout out to Manscaped for supporting United People's TV. You let me know what you think in the comments below.
Hopefully we can make it three wins in a row, right? That'd be nice. Haven't done that in a while. Last time we did that. <laughs>